in this town. Yeah. Carolina News? Yeah. yeah. Ah, what's going on? Someone else? Yeah, but hope you don't like them. Yeah, but hope you don't like them. Oh my god, I haven't used my truck in like two years. And it's going to stay that way too. There's lightning. I'm here. I don't know about it. We all get fried, son. We all get fried. Alright, somebody you up on my does anyone have? Hold on for a second. Two. But but sure, so now, yeah, that's what you just told me. So now I get here and this came. Why is it still in rotation exactly? Why are we still using it? Are you new to the crew? What's your name? Brianna. Brianna. Hi, I'm Chris. How long? How long have you been here? Oh, you brand spanking you. All right. We have some other folk over here. Um, hey, man. Okay. Simone, what's up? Is it? Uh, is it just that day? Yeah. Last time that all day had a problem. No, this is this is a table that I brought. It's always working. I think it's the right one. Is the audio on? Do we have levels? Jeff, do you have levels on that? Yeah. All right, because let me see. Tony, if you can hear me, just see your mic check. Your mic check. Hey, that's good. All right, I'm just getting the confirmation from him. Because, you know, Sheriff talks a little bit softer than I do. Just a little bit, but this is a mic check. Ooh, everybody's just running around scurrying, getting all this stuff together. Uh, you might need to set up over here next to him. Uh, where is y'all's camera? Oh, is y'all set up yet? Oh, oh, oh y'all got a camera camera now. No more iPhones? I got a camera camera. All right. Everybody's official mic check. Keep on rising to the top. You, do you have a um, SLR cable? They got a malt box right down there. Yeah, uh huh. Yeah. Or you can just plug in your malt box there. Yeah. And I'll give you a mic check. It's going to hurt. All right. Uh, 
Oh, oh I just saw someone took my picture. <laughs> All right. All right. Did everybody get their white balance? Okay. So everybody got their white balance now? Yes. Alex, you got your white balance? Yeah. Okay. All right, can so put this back under here? All right. Like I said, everybody's mic check. Oh, my neck is sore. All right, five minutes out. Is that your laptop? Or is it um, 
Really? Yeah. Yeah, he, he kind of said he just unplugged the key. Oh, beautiful. Yeah, I've been trying. 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 i i Already, mic check. Mic check, mic check, mic check. Mic check. One, two. We're about five minutes out. Ooh, about three minutes out. We're about three minutes out. As soon as I see the sheriff, it's time to go. All right, uh, mic check. All right, one, two, three. What's that, man? All right, one, two, three. One, two, one, two. Give me a thumbs up. You hear me good? Mic check. One, two. Mic check. All right, mic check. This, yeah, this is us right there. Yeah, all right. Trying to. Hey, do y'all have y'all cube on? The cube is on? Yes. The receiver's on? All right. All right. Let's see. One, two, three. Sh Richmond County Sheriff's Department. 10 a.m. Press conference. 10 a.m. People are just getting situated. I'm ready. Okay, one, two, one, two. All right. Time to go. All right, chairs ready? Yes, sir. All right, cell phone silence. Turn off cell phones, please. Excuse me. Oh, Everybody ready? Thumbs up. Think the gloomy and weary weather we have outside is pretty appropriate for today. Um, I've stood up here and done a lot of press conferences in 25 years as sheriff, and this is probably one of the saddest ones I've had to stand up here and do um, to talk about two 20-month-old twins who lost their life. Um, seen a lot of cases. I think this case is probably one of the top ones that just gripped the community, not only the, their family, but just also the family of Richland County and all the people that were involved in this case. 20, 20 days ago, you know, we lost two precious uh, young people. We did a very intense investigation for the past three weeks. Um, we put everything that we had into this investigation to make sure that um, there was no questions left unanswered. Um, as a result of our investigation, we finished it. We presented the evidence to the solicitor's office, and the solicitor's office has decided that um, no charges will be brought. Um, it's just a horrible, horrible, tragic accident that occurred. Um, the father was under some Intense pressure at work that really had his mind somewhere else that day. And in his mind, he really believed that he had dropped the two boys off at the at daycare. There was no doubt in his mind that he had done that. Uh, I've seen a lot of interviews, and this was probably one of the heart-wrenching interviews you'd ever see is when we had to interview the father. 
uh, the pure emotion that, that came out it was not something that you could fake. Um, he went, went to work, thought he'd dropped his children off, worked throughout the day, went to pick his children up, and discovered that they were not in the daycare center, that, that he'd left them in the car. Uh, at that point, everything was done medically that could, could have been done, but it, it was too late. Um, everybody that was involved in this case has been touched by it. Um, the coroner's office, the EMS workers, the dispatchers, our deputies have all went through counseling. Uh, this is something that, that will get you as a parent. You don't even have to be a parent um, for something like this to emotionally have an impact on you and, and your heart and your life. And so we've, we've addressed that with our people and those with other agencies that's been involved in it. Um, I just, it's, it's, it's tragic, it's tragic. It's a, it's a parent's worst nightmare. It's also a community's worst nightmare too because so many people um, cared about these two young people, two boys, even though they didn't know them. Uh, just the fact that they were 20 month old twins whose life was in front of them and that they tragically w was taken from them. Um, I know a lot of people will see this tonight or today and read about it. A lot of people believe in the power of prayer. I just ask people to pray. Just pray for this family. This, this family needs prayer. Um, their life will never be the same. Um, I just, nothing's going to replace these two boys. Nothing's going to take away the pain that this family's going to feel, particularly the father. So I just ask this community just to lift them up in, in prayer. Um, not going to go into details of the investigation. I'll just tell you we did everything. That, there's nothing that we did not check or look into or verify. It's just a horrible, tragic accident that occurred. Um, and the solicitor's office, looked, again, looked at the facts. They are the ones who make the determination. We present the facts to them, and they decide if it's been criminal intent and somebody needs to be arrested. And their decision was made that no one should be charged. Had the coroner with us um, also this morning. Answer any questions you have. When did the father realize that they were in the back of the car and had passed away? Was that after he had gone into the daycare on return? Yeah, he actually went into daycare to pick them up just like he normally does every day. Uh, and they said they're not there, and he looked for them and. They're not there, and that's when he went back to the car and found them. And did some things then that he could do to try to save them, but it, at that point it was too late. And was it his job to normally drop the two things off? I don't, I don't know if he do, normally does it every day, but that was his day, was that morning to drop them off. Will you be releasing or are you protecting the um, identity of the father? Well, I think the press release is going to give you the name of the two young boys, so you can figure it out from there. Sheriff, I don't want to try to have you identify this man anymore, but can you give a little more details on what kind of work he did or what kind of pressure he was under? I suspect when people hear this today, they'll be like, well, what could that be exactly? <laughs> Faction plant that we have here in Richland County. And there were some things going on at work, um, not your normal work activity, just some things that was going on that he was dealing with at work. And um, that contributed to it. Um, I am not can't say it caused it, it contributed to it. Again, those are parents, you know, balancing work and being a parent is, is a balance. And unfortunately, sometimes the, the work takes over your personal stuff on what you should be focusing on. And I think that's what happened today. Didn't happen on purpose, didn't mean to do it. God, he didn't mean to do it. He's got to live with that the rest of his life. Um, but it, it, it happened. Okay, Connor, anything? Thank you, Sheriff Lott, and for the work that the Richland County Sheriff's Department did in investigating this case, it certainly was one of those ones that sticks with you uh, because you just want to know what happened. And unfortunately on this day, this father uh, just made a terrible mistake. It was an accident. 
We have ruled it an accident in terms of the manner of death, the cause of death uh, will be listed as hyperthermia, um, which we said in our first press conference. And so we just want uh, the community to band together and pray for this family. I cannot tell you the hundreds of phone calls that I've received from community members that know uh, this family, that have spoken with them, that are praying for them, that are trying to help them through this tragedy. Um, and so we ask each of you today, anyone watching, to just send up your prayers. Um, if you have a vehicle that has the rear seat reminder, set it turn it on. Um, a lot of times we turn off that little aggravating noise in the newer vehicles. I know the Tahoes that we drive have them and I always wondered what it was for and it wasn't until this case that I realized it was a reminder to look in the back seat. So we urge each parent, there are so many stressors with COVID-19 with with just the world changing, look in the back seat, make sure that you've dropped off the children. For every child care center, baby center, caregiver out there, we urge you, if the child does not show up, call the family. It's a, it's a, it could save a life. And so we just want to thank, uh, on behalf of the coroner's office, the Richland County Sheriff's Department for working so diligently with us on this. Um, and as I said before, if this was an accident, we pray that this family one day finds peace. Um, and so there's no justice to be sought here, just, um, just prayers. So thank you guys so much. Do you have any questions? I have a quick question. I know it's you know, not summer, but it's still pretty hot outside. About how long can it take for some tragedy like this to happen? You have to think when you have a, the normal body temperature is 98.6. And so when you start going above that, even a fever of 105, 104 can cause febrile seizures and death. And so you have to think that the heat index in that car was 120 degrees um, at its maximum from what we believe. And so it didn't take long. Just to it, confirm, um, the father never uh, went to the daycare in the morning on the way to work. He never stopped there and went straight to work, correct? That's what we believe the timeline to be. Okay, thank you. Any other questions? Where, where was his, his work in relation to the daycare? I guess, was that in, in Columbia? Was it in that area? It was close to that area. Okay. All right, thank you. Thank you.